I like making stuff a bit more complicated than it could possibly be because it gives you a great insight into problems and how to solve them in many different ways. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. I wanted to look fucking better, but it just didn't work out because those collapsed once again. Never mind, I look nice and sporty with Papa Euleroid right here. <laughs> this fucking bitch boy. You really adored my number theory video a while back, so why the hell not post more on this channel right here? And we are going to start off with a really basic proof, square root of 2 being irrational but not transcendental. You are going to find this in nearly every number theory or algebra and arithmetic course homework somewhere at some point. It's a really basic proof by contradiction. We're going to do it kind of papa style today, but let's start off slowly. What's the proof by contradiction? Well, we have a statement and we are going to negate the statement, meaning we are going to take the opposite of the statement. And then we are going to prove this opposite of the statement false in order for our original statement to be true. So what's our original statement? Well, we want to show that square root of 2 is irrational, meaning that it's not rational. So square root of 2 is not rational. That's just an equivalent formulation for our problem at, at hand. Okay, and now we want to negate the statement, taking the opposite, meaning we're going to get rid of this not right here and just say square root of 2 is indeed rational. What does it mean for a number to, re to be rational? Well, it means nothing but square root of 2 can be constructed as a over b. Let's place some restrictions on a and b. Well, we want a and b to be element of the natural numbers but without zero. This restriction is okay. okay, we can do it like this. We don't want it to be equal to zero, mainly because b is right there. Not good. Infinity is not a number, my boys. And also there's one really useless property. No, it's not, it's fucking important. We want the GCD of A and B to be one. That's just the greatest common divisor. Meaning, those two are co-prime. So uh, a little example, so two numbers are not co-prime. For example, the number four and the number two. So four over two is nothing but two times two over two. You can cancel out the twos, meaning that the greatest common divisor of four and two is just two. But those two numbers, for example, seven and three, have a GCD of one because, well, prime numbers are by definition co-prime to other prime numbers. Yeah, just as a little example. So let's work with this statement right here. What we can do? Well, b is not equal to zero. That comes in handy because now we can multiply both sides by b. So we have square root of two times b is equal to a. And also we can square both sides. Why the hell not? That's equivalent to saying we have two times b squared is equal to a squared. And here's a little matter of fact. We can take the natural numbers and break those natural numbers up into a partition, namely two little sets. So you see, we have the natural numbers consisting of one, so natural numbers without zero in this case, one and two and three and blah, blah, blah. And you see what we can do? We can take a look at the set of even natural numbers, which are just two and four and six, blah, blah, blah. Well, how can we interpret this set right here? Well, the set of natural even numbers is nothing but 2 times k, where k is element of the natural numbers but without zero. So this is just the set. I have to close off this bracket. Yeah, you see, we can construct every even natural number by saying we have some even natural number n being equal to 2 times k. There's the opposite case. We can have the set of odd natural numbers which are namely 1 and 3 and 5, blah, blah, blah. And how we can construct those? Well, they are by definition not divisible by 2. That means we can construct them as 2 times k plus 1, where k is element of the natural numbers, but this time with 0. So we can do this. Just a little matter of fact. Okay, coolio. And you see, 
by this definition right here, a squared is indeed an even number. So that's a little observation we can do. A squared is even. And what we want to show next is that this statement indeed implies that a is also even. That's a really important statement we are going to prove on the next blackboard. <laughs> So now for the proof. You can do this proof by contraposition, for example, like Steve did, Black Pen, Red Pen did a while back, but that wouldn't be Papa style. So I came up with um, a little proof being inspired by my pet, a bachelor's paper. That's why I introduced a set of even and odd natural numbers. And you see, those two sets are exactly a partition of our natural numbers without zero. Watch my set theory video I'm going to post after this, or maybe it's already out before this. I really don't know, I really don't have a schedule. So what does that mean? Our natural numbers without zero are exactly the union of our odd and even natural numbers. But here's one important statement, what we can also say, that the intersection of our odd numbers and our even numbers is just the empty set. This right here, this intersection, is the set, theoreti set theoretical, I'm sorry, equivalent to saying something is and is that. What that means is that a natural number without zero can't be even and odd at the same time. So this is quite important. Just a little important fact, <laughs> for, for this proof at least. So in order for us to prove this, we have to take two cases into consideration. Either n is even or n is odd in the end. But at first I would like to take a look at something else. Let's say we take a look at a squared plus a right here. And what we can do, since they are not element of the natural numbers with zero, so that means a can be equal to zero, we can also write this as a times a plus one. Like I said, we want to consider the first case. Let's say a is odd. We are starting with this. a squared is even, but we are going to say that a is odd. Meaning, if a is odd, that's equivalent to saying a is nothing but 2 times k plus 1 by this definition right here. OK, and now we can work with this. So let's just plug it into here. So we have a squared plus a. And this right here is the sum of an even and an odd number at the moment. So this right here is even plus odd. This is nothing but, well, let's plug the definitions in. If a squared is even, that also means that a squared is nothing but, uh, let's say, 2 times n. Yeah, and n and k are out of natural numbers. By this definition down there, that's why I'm not writing it anymore. Okay, let's plug all of this stuff in. So we have 2 times n plus 2 times k plus 1. And you see, now we can factor out this 2 by the dis distributivity of natural numbers, the left distributivity, 2 times n plus k plus 1. And you see, the natural numbers are closed under addition. That means n plus k is also element of natural numbers. So this thing right here takes the form of an odd number. So that means even plus odd is going to end us up with odd at the moment. But we also have another side right here. We also have this right here. We have a times a plus 1. Let's plug in the definition for our a. So we end up with 2 times k plus 1 times, OK, so this is 2 times k plus 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 is just 2. So that means we can factor out this 2 and bring it to the front. So we have 2 times 2k plus 1 times k plus 1. And you see, closure under addition. This is element of natural numbers, and this is element of natural numbers. Natural numbers are also closed under multiplication. So this whole thing is element of natural numbers, and this is 2 times something out of natural numbers, which makes it even. <sighs> this isn't good, you see, because on the one hand we have this being odd, but on the other hand we have this being even, and equals 2 is an equivalence relation on our natural numbers. So that means this right here is a little contradiction. So this first case doesn't work out. And now for the next case. Okay, and now just the same spiel again, just like before. I've written everything out, so A is even now, this is our second case, and this is the only need for 
this little uh, lemma, you could say, for this little theorem, this partition stuff right here. Okay, let's just go through everything. So now, at the moment, we have even plus even, you could say. Well, this is nothing but um, a squared plus a, but we can plug this in, so this is 2n plus 2 times k. We can factor out the 2 using the left distributivity of natural numbers, 2 times n plus k, closure under addition. Well, this thing right here is exactly even, just for the record. And now we can also plug this into here, our definition for a. So this is equal to 2 times k times 2 times k plus 1. And you see, now we can factor out this 2 right here once again. So this is 2 times k times 2k plus 1. Closure under addition, closure un under multiplication. This right here is element of natural numbers. 2 times something out of natural numbers is indeed even. So this right here doesn't lead to a contradiction. So we have derived a lot of stuff regarding um, addition and multiplication on the natural numbers, odd times odd, odd times even, blah, blah, blah. This thing has been proven to be correct. So we have shown this implication by this little casework right here. Let's go back to here. So this right here is indeed correct. If a is even, that's equivalent to saying a is nothing but um, 2 times n. Let's put it that way. Now we can plug this definition into here. So we end up with, so we have 2 times b squared being e equal to 2 times n squared. So this is for n squared. 2 isn't equal to 0. So we can divide both sides by 2. Yeah, and we end up with b squared being equal to 2 times n squared. And you see, now we have b squared being equal to an even natural number. That also means, by our previous lemma theorem, blah, 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 whatever you want to call it, b is also even, equivalent to saying b is nothing but 2 times k, with k out of the natural numbers without 0. Now we can plug this stuff into our first little thing right here. So, that also means square root of 2 is now nothing but 2 times n over 2 times k. And just like with the little example I had before, the 2s are going to cancel out, meaning that the GCD of a and b now is 2. But this in itself is a contradiction because at first we said that the GCD, the greatest common divisor of a and b is 1, but now suddenly it's 2. So this right here leads to a contradiction, meaning that our negated statement is false, meaning that our original statement is indeed true. So we have proven square root of 2 to be irrational. That was quite a lot of work. Um, yeah, maybe my method right here was once again a little bit overkill, but I really like this. And now for the square root of 2 not being transcendental part. <laughs> Before starting off with this main proof right here, I would just like to clarify what it means for a number to be transcendental. Well, it just means that this number is not the solution, not the root of a polynomial with integer coefficients. For example, the number e or pi. But not, for example, the Fibonacci number, the, the golden ratio. It's exactly the root of a polynomial. I have proven this before, at least by solving a polynomial. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, so we want to show that square root of 2 is not transcendental. So that only means we have to find a certain polynomial which has square root of 2 as a root. So why not assume at first that square root of 2 is indeed the root to a polynomial. Let's say we have some x value being equal to square root of 2. And now we could square both sides, for example. So we end up with x squared being equal to 2. And now we can subtract 2 on both sides. Then we have x squared minus 2 being equal to 0. And now you could be really nitpicky and say this right here isn't a polynomial at the moment because a polynomial is of the form um, a times x squared plus b times x plus c being equal to some f of x. So you can also rewrite this as being just x squared plus 0 times x minus 2 being equal to 0. And why not define this polynomial right here to be our f of x? And if we just said f of x to be equal to 0, then we are going to find indeed the root to our, po to our polynomial being square root of 2. At least one of the real roots of this polynomial, the other one would be negative square root of 2. 
And then we are done. The square root of 2 is irrational but not transcendental. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. I like making stuff a bit more complicated than it could possibly be because it gives you a great insight into problems and how to solve them in many different ways. You can also prove the statement we had before right here using uh, stuff from number theory like um, if a prime number divides a and b then this prime number divides a or this prime number divides b something like this it's Bessou's formula or something no it's called something else never mind so you can also prove the statement differently or like i said by contraposition like in black pen red pens video if you did enjoy this video please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like if you want to support the channel a bit more by those stupid ass t-shirts i created here papa oil right right here um or slap my ours i don't know no you can also support the channel on patreon and up until the next video have a uh, I've already shown you so many things. Yeah. Physical papers day. See ya. Warum sind die alle so